Okay, we're getting ready to uh, put our loaves in the oven. Uh, first question, of course, is when are they ready? So I use a poke test. Uh, sometimes I'll actually lift on the, on the end of the loaf and you'll see that it's very light and airy. You can almost see into uh, the dough mass because of all the aeration from the fermentation and the bubbles. You can see them you know, all over. And that's characteristic of this bread is just a more of an open crumb is what it's referred to. Uh, the poke test I'm talking about is just, you know, that you would hold that there. Uh, and as you can see, it's lingering. Okay. And then there's that, that particular lightness to it. So, and it's, it's, it's dry here. Uh, one thing you can do with uh, this transfer peel, a transfer peel or a baguette peel, you can, you can get these, uh, they're available. This one I made out of a, a wine crate box that was a, a very thin piece of, of pine, uh, but you can buy them. They're a little bit longer because they're designed to, to transfer baguettes, long skinny breads, but this works really well. Uh, you could make one out of a very stiff piece of cardboard or masonite board. You just kind of shop around or uh, find something that will work for you. But I just put a little bit of flour on there. But the idea of the cloth, you're kind of probably wondering why are we putting these in the cloth? Why are we pr proofing them right side down, seam side down? So you'll see, you're going to place your, 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 your transfer peel here and just simply lay it over. And look what's happening right here is you're getting this beautiful uh, separation and it's very random. Uh, there's a very rustic quality to, to this loaf that I, I really love. So uh, again, it's just barely coming back. It's ready to go in. And then we're going to just bring it over and transfer it to the oven. And then we're going to do another one. Same idea. If you see, if you notice that there's a little bit some shiny areas, that might be a problem as far as sticking on, uh, on, on the hand peel or the transfer peel. So make sure uh, you, you run a little bit of flour. If you run a little bit of flour on your, on your peel, uh, or again, you could do this and just lightly tap it and get a film of flour on that. But as you can see, that poke test is telling you just lingering, barely coming back. If you were to push that and have that impression go, you know, straight to the bottom, you're probably running into a situation where it's overproofed. So, so you know, monitor uh, the progress. I say an hour. It could be an hour and ten minutes. It could be an hour and a half in terms of readiness for the oven. So it all depends on your ambient temperatures. So, so just pay attention. Take some time to check uh, the progress. But again, the nice thing about the cloth is you just put it right here and it's just gently bring it over. Again, we've got a really nice seam here. So that, that, that tells me that's exactly where that weak point is and that's exactly where the loaf is going to break. And then you've got this nice flowering pattern uh, which will create contrast as the, the crust develops color. So we'll get the second one in. All right, so here we are. We've taken the loaves out. Uh, they're going to start cooling on a cooling rack. Uh, it's nice, nice to get some airflow underneath them uh, so that the, the loaves cool completely. 
Uh, I know there's a temptation to snap into it and cut into it right away, but uh, even though the uh, starches have s gelled in, in the baking process and is solidified, because it's so hot, uh, when you try to cut into a loaf like this, uh, it tears the crumb or the inside of the loaf, you know, even with a really sharp serrated knife. If you really can't resist cutting into the loaf uh, or eating the bread, uh, I would recommend just breaking it apart uh, as a way of enjoying the bread if you absolutely can't wait uh, more than an hour. But yeah, usually you want to wait a little while. Uh, the reason being is, is all this nice color that we're, we've gotten on this loaf uh, is, is flavor. And through the cooling process, that, that those f the flavor will actually uh, penetrate into the loaf as it's cooling. So think of it as the lo loaf is contracting and drawing some of those f that flavor uh, from the crust into the crumb. Um, and then as you can see, you know, we did get a really nice break or a, a, a design to our, our flap that we created with the, uh, the rice flour, the rice and wheat flour. So this is something that uh, I, I've just really enjoyed uh, doing uh, this process where you kind of do this, th that letter fold. Um, and then, you know, things that you can check are like tapping on the loaf and having that hollow sound. There's a certain heft to a loaf this size. So you can pick it up kind of like hot potato style and, and you can really um, get a feel for uh, the, the doneness of the loaf. Another way would be to insert a, a, a thermometer uh, into the, into it, you know, discreetly into the end of the loaf and, and you want to get something measuring about 200, 210 degrees. Um, so, but this, this is adequate and uh, that's, uh, we're going to just go let this cool and uh, we'll come back to it and open it up and see what's inside. Okay, here we are, the moment of truth. We've got our loaves, they've had a chance to cool a bit. We're going to slice into them so we can look at the crumbs, see how we did as far as fermentation. There's a lot of things that uh, are revealed uh, once you open it up. Uh, and of course, the taste test. Uh, so uh, what I like to do uh, as far as slicing a, a bread like this, uh, you'll notice that you know, if I push down directly over the top of the loaf, you can see there's a lot of give. So Typically, uh, an easier way to slice into a type of bread that has a, a, a fairly sturdy crust and a nice tender crumb is to put the loaf on edge like so. And so that you're taking advantage of the sole of the loaf and then just, you know, and then plus you're cutting through less material this way, so or, or less of the, 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 the bread itself. So, and then, and then there we go, we've got, uh, some beautiful color there. I'm going to take another slice so that we can really look at the cross section of the crumb. And uh, believe it or not, it's still kind of warm. Uh, I would probably prefer to have it uh, cool a little bit more than that, but let's let's take a look at what we've got here. You can see, uh, you know, some nice open uh, crumb structure. You can see uh, very closely in there the thin very thin walls of the of the loaf itself, of the crumb, and uh, and a good uh, the crust has been set very nicely. You know you really see a definition between what we're calling the crust and then the crumb of the loaf as well. I hope you found the the video uh, helpful as far as uh, taking uh, the next step in making bread at home uh, using the formula for French Bread 101. Uh, so we're going to actually break into this, or I'm going to break into it. And uh, hopefully you'll be doing the same at home. Uh, and then look at the nice crumb here. And then, mm, very sweet, um, nice chew, very tender. And uh, I want to thank you again uh, for joining me. And uh, get out there and do some baking. Thank you.